I've been using Photoshop since day one, and anymore, I never use the crop tool. Don't get me wrong, I crop, but not with the crop tool. Let me explain. All right, let's start with a little bit of setup, just so this makes sense. So this happens to be an image I created in the most recent version of Adobe Firefly. I've also upsampled it, made a bunch of modifications. I, re I removed some JPEG artifacts, by the way which I'm, I'm coming to understand is something that is built into all of these AI image generators. But anyway, if you're curious about that kind of stuff, you can check out my Patreon. But for now, I've just gone ahead and done some work on this stuff. It's a flat background. That'll prove to be a little bit of a problem. We'll see that in a moment. I decided I didn't like her original eyes. Here they are. So I replaced them with some photographic eyes for what it's worth. And then I've got this text layer right here. But more to the point, if you look down here in the bottom left corner of the image window, I've switched to, to document dimensions. It's just helpful to know where you're starting before you start cropping, right? So this image measures 4,200 pixels wide, 2,672 tall. So that's more than 12 megapixels. Now I'm going to go to screen with this image, so I don't want nearly as many pixels by the time I'm done. In fact, what I want, this, these are the standard for YouTube thumbnails, but it's a good widescreen standard in general, social media standard, 1280 by 720 pixels good place to go and it is 16 by 9 so widescreen so that's awesome okay so probably we we need to crop it that there's no probably there it's not the right aspect ratio currently so you might think well use the crop tool thing about the crop tool is it's actually a lot of tool there's a lot going on where this tool is concerned it's quite messy it can get messy. It can damage your image quite easily, even if you turn off the one checkbox you already know to turn off. But it's disguised as a simple tool. And so that's the problem. And so I'll just go ahead and select the crop tool. And right now it's, it's, it's set to its default settings, which include delete crop pixels. Now, I think we can all agree that is a terrible default setting Adobe. And it didn't used to be the default, they changed it. And again, it's this thing where they're just always trying to dumb down the software to make sure the newbies don't get confused. But the problem is that therefore they punish the new people. You know, it's just nuts. Anyway, so turn that off, obviously. And then this thing set to ratio right here by default. So that's cool. Actually, there's a, six, a 16 by nine ratio right there, which is gonna be resolution independent. So it's not, it is going to crop the image now at this point. That's all it's gonna do. And it's not going to downsample. It's not gonna get rid of a single pixel, especially since we said not to delete the crop pixels because we're not absolute buffoons. And so I just went ahead and applied that change. But now notice down here, in the bottom left corner of the image window, it now measures 4,200 pixels by 2,362. So it's not nearly the 1,280 by 720 that we're looking for. The good news is we now have an independent layer. It's called layer zero. It's no longer the flat background. If I press the V key to switch to the move tool and drag it around, you can see I've got some extra image. We're not moving the eyes currently. That's okay, because I'm gonna undo that move. But I just want you to see where we're at. All right, I'm going to undo that change, that crop, because that's not what I'm looking for. What I'm looking for is 1280 by 720. So what I'm going to do is return to the crop tool, but of course, but here's the problem. As soon as you want to get all particular about the pixels, you have to go with time, times high times resolution. You just... That's not, that's not even an option. It's not even an option not to. So notice if I go with 1280 by 800, which is close, right? By 113 PPI, which is like totally arbitrary. So let's get rid of the resolution because we, I don't want to resample the image. You know what I mean, right? I don't want to downsample at this point. I want to be able to do that later. I'm just trying to get the size, the physical size of the image, right? The canvas. And so now this is, this is still wrong. So I'll take this guy down to 720. And so 1280, 720, I'm getting the dimensions I want out of this. And now I'll just, you know, I haven't specified a resolution. So cross my fingers, delete crop pixels is turned off. So I'm not going to damage the image, right? No, I am going to damage the image. That's a down sample. You saw it. We, we just lost a bunch of pixels because we're now seeing a lot fewer pixels on screen. The image, you know, the, the zoom ratio did not change. And so we just lost a ton of pixels. And notice down here, we did. Now it's 1280 by 720. It used to be 12 megapixels. Now it's a megapixel. 
So we, we've lost a lot where this image is concerned. So undo that, that is not the way to go. So you may say, Deke, okay, so you're being such a smarty pants here. What is the solution? The solution is to bypass the crop tool entirely. It just, it just doesn't have what we're looking for. And you wanna go up to the image menu and choose the canvas size command, which is like a really old command in the software and ha barely has changed over time. And it just happens to be super great. And it's going to change the canvas size, which is what you do when you change, when you crop an image, you change the canvas size. But we're going to do so independently of the physical image size. So if we do it right, we're not going to lose any pixels. So I'll choose canvas size. And then notice it's set to pixels right there. So that's great. And then I would just dial in 1280 to, by 720 right there. And, and then see all these arrows pointing inward? That means we're cropping in. That means we're cropping in from all sides. So relative is turned off because we're going with an absolute dimension. Click OK. and I'm going to get this warning. Now, this warning is, is usually a little irritating because it's usually wrong. In my case, it's accurate, actually. It's saying the new canvas size is smaller than the current canvas size. Well, that's true. That's true under any circumstance because we have arrows facing inward. But it's after, it's the second sentence, really. It's the part after the semicolon, some clipping will occur. That is not necessarily true. In my case, it is because I have a flat background. If you have a flat background, if you can see in a layers panel, this thing that's called background on a PC, it's going to be italicized, then that means you're hosed if you click proceed. You're, you're, you, you will indeed throw away a bunch of pixels. So definitely say, oh yeah, you know what? You're right, actually. Photoshop alert message. I'll cancel a couple of times here. And I'll do myself a favor. It's really simple. All you got to do is double click on the background. You don't have to call it anything. Layer layer one is just fine, but I'll call mine Firefly just so it's named. And I'll click OK. Now it's it's an independent layer. And that way it can be bigger than the canvas. The background can't because it's flat. It's not a layer. Whereas anything that is a layer, everything but the background, by the way, but something called the background in the in the layers panel, it can be bigger than the canvas. And so now I'll return to the image menu and choose canvas size once again. And I'll just dial in those same uh, 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 you know, values that I did before, 1280 by 720, and now I click OK. And now I, I'll still get the alert message because the alert message, is, it's not tuned in to what's really going on. It's not smart enough to know what, 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 the, what the deets really are. And so it continues to say the first part, which is true, and the second part, which is now totally false. Some clipping will not occur. Hey, real quick, do you like that image? I made it in Firefly, which currently generates four megapixels, but that thing we've been looking at is 12 megapixels, and those pixels are in considerably better shape. How? Join me at my Patreon, which is patreon.com slash deeknow. And now, back to the better way to crop in Photoshop. I'm gonna cancel one more time because I, I'm just throwing this out there. What if you, what if you want to keep it loose for now? You want to make sure you got the aspect ratio right, and you want to approximately have the number of pixels right, but you want to give yourself, you know, some wiggle room. So it's, it's like, I, here's, I'll tell you what I'm talking about. I'm going to enter star 2, asterisk 2, for 1280, and that'll multiply it times 2. And then I'll do the same thing with this guy, times 2 and it'll just do the math for me. And now this is going to be four times as many pixels as I need, twice as many wide, twice as many tall. And now that way I can do some more editing after I'm done here and worry about the downsampling later, which I will do in just a moment. But now it's all arrows pointing in, click OK, don't care about this error message, click proceed, and I'm fine. And I now have exactly the number of pixels I want. Look down here in this area, the bottom left corner of the image window, 1260 by 1440, just what I want. I don't care. This isn't going to print, so I don't care about the resolution value. It does not matter. And so now all I need to do is just go ahead and, you know, center the image and downsample or, or change its size a little bit. Not downsample. That'd be the wrong way to put it. So I, you know what I'm going to do is switch to the type layer right there and press the V key to switch to the move tool up here at the top of the toolbox. And the reason I'm doing this is so I can show you the, the type tool, the type that is, even though it looks like it disappeared, it hasn't. It's just off canvas. It just went outside the canvas. So that's a great thing about actual layers in Photoshop. They can be bigger than the canvas. They can be like out inside other parts of the canvas where you can't see them. I don't need this guy, so I'll just get rid of him. 
pressing the backspace key. And now the eyes are showing up as selected. That's a function of this setting up here that says show transform handles. I, it bothers me, so I'm going to turn it off. That's up to you, of course. But anyway, here's the deal, right? Now what I'm going to do, because I want to finesse this stuff, I, I, I don't want her not centered. And I'm just going to be, uh, well, you know, uh, simple. I'm going to be a simpleton, and I'm going to make sure this image is exactly centered, as we'll see in just a moment. And I also want to downsample it a little bit. I want to resize it, but I don't want to change the number of pixels, so I'm going to shift-click on Firefly. So both eyes and Firefly are selected. Rectangular marquee tools active, so I can just right-click and choose Convert to Smart Object, and that way I'm putting everything in a protective container, so now I can resize it if I want to. And I can also physically, you know, modify its position and so forth. So the first thing I'll do is just zoom out a little bit. And I'll go up to the edit menu and choose free transform, control T, command T. Uh, there may be one or two of you going, yeah, Deke, but nowadays with the move tool, you could do this just as easily. Up to you, totally, if you want to work that way. I'm not even going to show you. It's just, it's totally a personal decision where that's concerned. And so now I can down, I can resize this image. I'm not downsampling it because I'm not really actually changing the number of pixels because they're all protected in this smart object. And notice that the width and height are something. I don't really care. They're locked together. That's what matters because I, I don't want to squish the image. And I'll just press the enter key to accept that change. And that's because I haven't really done anything because I'm working with the smart object. I can come back and do what I really want in just a moment. Here's the thing. I'm going to go up to the view menu, choose guides, and choose new guide, and then make sure vertical is turned on, and then just change this to 50%. I love this trick. And then click OK, and now you have a guide right there in the center, vertical guide right there in the center of the image, which means now you can center this image as you refine its size. So I'll just take, I'll just use that keyboard shortcut. It was right there, but now I was going to use it, but I wasn't sure I mentioned it. Anyway, I'll choose free transform and I'll just kind of move her nose into the center right there. And then I can alter option, drag the edges to, to go ahead and, and uh, uh, th that is resize with, with respect to the center of the image, more or less like so. But what I, I'm going to take this out because I'm 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 going to need to crop some of this image away, but I'll make it a little bigger. There we go. And actually, she looks pretty centered at this point. And what I like to do is just take it up a little bit. Notice the width and height are set to 63 and change. I'll just say, change them to 64 percent. That way, it's going a little bit outside. Do you know why I'm doing this? Have you ever? taken down the image so it exactly matches the canvas size and you see these tiny little white edges around the entire canvas. That's because some anti-aliasing is going on. That wouldn't happen if you were using the flat background, but it does happen with layers. So give yourself a little bit of wet, extra wiggle room right there. And now I'll go ahead and accept that change. And at this point, you can make any other modifications you want. You would presumably go up to the file menu and choose the save as command to make sure you don't save over the original. But more to the point, our image is still too big, right? It measures 2560 by 1440, which has given us the room we need in order to make high quality modifications if we like. But now you need to export it by going in the file menu, choose export, and then choose export as, because that way you can specify a file format and an image size. Now this is a continuous tone image, so you don't need to work with ping. JPEG is going to work fine, especially at a quality setting of seven. You're going to lose almost nothing, by the way. But here's the point. In the image size area, not canvas size, leave that alone. Where image size is concerned, change the scale value right here to 50%, because after all, the width now is going to come down to 1280, which is what we're looking for in the high it's going to come down to 720. Resample should be by cubic. By cubic automatics going to auto sharpen on the way as it removes pixels and you don't want that. Then it's up to you. If you want to include the copyright info, be sure to convert to sRGB and then click export. And just like that, you have the exact result you're looking for. Thanks to the canvas size command instead of the crop tool. Have any thoughts? By all means, comment. Not to mention, like, subscribe, and turn on notifications. If you want to learn more about how I prepared that impeccable 12 megapixel image with the help of Firefly and much, much more, join me at patreon.com slash deke now. And then go to deke.com and sign up for my newsletter. I'm Deke McClellan. This is Deke Now.